everyone I have a very interesting case to share with you today so go ahead and take a look at this premolar bite wing radiograph of a patient um, so as you're evaluating I'm sure you're looking to see the uh, open contact and such uh, but for this video you are uh, you should be looking at within the alveolar process rather than the dental caries and hopefully by now most of you are seeing something in the mandibular region so yes if you see that that's great I want you to see this area there's a thin radiolucent rim and an opacity right below that right so this is something you should be catching um, just from bite wing radiographs so now let's take a look at um, the molar bite wing of the same area uh, you can actually see that uh, unknown entity uh, unknown lesion a little bit better just a little bit more right so here we go again that opacity which appears to super uh, impose with the mesial root of number 30 and then the radiolucent ring uh, additionally on this radiograph um, you can also see there is an um, a third molar crowns of third molar number 32 in this case so now let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the periapical radiograph of this area so I'm going to uh, move through and there you go so here we have periapical radiograph um, of this area so we can see the full visualization uh, full extent of this lesion again very well defined radio opacity and a radio loosened rim surrounding it and um, it is partly superimposed with the roots of root of number 29 as well as number 30 uh, at the same time I want to point out that the PDL space is intact okay um, so that those are some good features to notice uh, additionally uh, look at the overall density of this uh, this entity here we have a very densely radio opaque border and internally it's very radio lucent right uh, so what are um, what are some of your thoughts at this point uh, course my title is going to kind of show uh, or tell what it is but at this point when if you see this you should be really thinking of supernumerary uh, or uh, odontoma at this point so I think those two are probably the best differential diagnosis and if this is a supernumerary what would you say about the angulation of the tooth you know you are probably looking at a horizontally positioned supernumerary right and likely down the um, long axis of that tooth such that this may represent the pulpal uh, canal uh, pulpal tissue of that tooth so that's something to note um, so say this is odontoma or supernumerary uh, one of the question that I would be interested in is whether there is a uh, root resorption of the associate teeth I think it is very hard to say uh, yes we do see the outline of the root that appears to be uh, normal without any overt sign of resorption however what I don't know is whether there is a resorption um, on um, uh, other parts of that root so you kind of have to look at this three-dimensionally although this is a two-dimensional image just because you see that intact root outline doesn't mean there's no root resorption you do see that this extends into the root right so uh, while this is 2d therefore it's all superimposed you have to consider the still consider the possibility that the part of this root may have been resorbed by this supernumerary and that is also true for the mesial root of number 30 as well now I want to uh, oh well before we go to panoramic radiograph I want to show you that uh, uh, that 
cell entity one more time from a different periapical radiograph. This is a canine projection, canine PA uh, of, of that. Okay, now let's go to pan tomograph. And zoom in on the area of interest. Okay, again, uh, you know, uh, based on this view, I think again, supernumerary or odontoba would be great differential diagnosis. We see the radio density here that's very similar to the density of enamel, and certain areas appear very similar to that of dentin. Obviously, we are seeing some pulpal. Uh, density, uh, pul pulpal tissue density as well. So yeah, that's uh, what I wanted to show you. Additionally, I want you to now we can see the full extent of the third molar, which is now horizontally impacted. Again, from the previous full mouth series X-ray, we only saw a portion of that crown, but now you do see the full extent. And um, I hope it shows through or comes through the video that the position of the root is, is uh, in contact with the mandibular canal and there's a good chance that uh, there may be a slight constriction of that canal. Um, so let's also take a look at this area as well. Okay. Uh, it's not as easy to clearly visualize the canal, but once again, this is the approximate course of the left mandibular canal, likely coursing in this direction. So there is a close proximity, uh, alveolar crest superior to the crown of number 17 is uh, disrupted. So um, now you can guess why this patient may have presented to our clinic, right? So the chief complaint in this case was not this. This was rather a uh, incidental finding, so the patient uh, did not was not aware of this uh, supernumerary or odontoma, but this is an incidental finding. The patient presented to our clinic because of the headache and the pain associated with this impacted third molar. So um, yes, the patient also has tooth number one as well as number sixteen. Granted that 16 is fully erupted and looks like number one is uh, a partially erupted. So hope this was uh, interesting and I hope to see you again in the next video. Thank you for listening.